Item number, SCP-567, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures, Site-41 has been established at the former castle for the purpose of containing SCP-567. The entrance to SCP-567 is to be kept sealed at all times. All cell doors are to be monitored off-site via CCTV. In the event that a door is opened or breached, Task Force Delta-9, HAX, is tasked with containing the instance of SCP-5679 immediately. If containment proves impossible, termination is authorized. Because of the nature of SCP-567, and the proximity to it that TF Delta-9 will be working, to join TF Delta-9 an applicant must have a clean criminal record have never committed any crime, even at the orders of the Foundation, be of moderate political beliefs, have strong convictions as to the importance of upholding the law, have a strong fear of offending others with their actions. Description: SCP-567 is located in the dungeon beneath Site-41, located in Data Expunged. It consists of a series of eight cells, designated SCP-567-1 through SCP-567-8. With the majority of people and objects, the cells remain inert. However, when individuals meeting certain conditions come within 2.5 meters of a cell door, shackles will materialize and launch from inside of the cell, restraining the subject and dragging them within. Once the cell door closes and locks, both the subject and shackles vanish, leaving behind no trace of any kind. Each cell appears to have its own unique trigger conditions in order to activate, which seem to involve committing some sort of criminal or heretical act. These triggers and resulting responses are similar to other anomalies involving disproportionate law enforcement, such as SCP-1002 and SCP-2701. Cell Trigger Conditions SCP-567-1 Individual has committed theft. SCP-567-2 Individual has committed rape. SCP-567-3 Individual has committed murder involving data expunged. SCP-567-4 Individual has committed murder involving data expunged. SCP-567-5 See Addendum 567-1. SCP-567-6. Data expunged. SCP-567-7. Data expunged. SCP-567-8. Unknown. SCP-567-8 is unique in that, unlike the other cells which all stand empty, it contains a single wooden chair. The chair is nailed to the floor in the center of the room and appears to be many years old, though it does not rot. SCP-567-8 has never activated. On rare occasions, the cell doors of SCP-567 will open and release an entity, given the designation SCP-5679-X, the X being replaced with an integer. SCP-5679 usually takes the form of a previously undiscovered creature and is always aggressive. Once out of its cell, SCP-5679 typically attempts to break out of SCP-567. There seems to be no common trait of the creatures given designation SCP-5679, except that they tend to be very aggressive and relatively intelligent. As well, Every instance of SCP-5679 has had burn marks around its appendages. See Incident Report Log 5674012 for details. Incident Report Log 5674012 Date May 19 Subject SCP-56791 Description Though there were two reported incidences of SCP-5679 before the Foundation arrived, SCP-5679-1 was the first incidence observed by the Foundation. 
It was discovered by Agent and was approximately two meters in length. Though it walked on four limbs, its front limbs had human-like hands, capable of operating complex devices. SCP-56791 was quite intelligent and was able to deduce the operation of a data expunged. There were a total of 14 casualties prior to its containment. Date June 19 Subject SCP-56792 Description SCP-56792 appeared shortly after Site-41 was fully established and quarantined and took the form of Data Expunged. Foundation personnel suffered nine casualties before it was destroyed with remote explosives. Agent who participated in the containment of SCP-56792, is currently undergoing psychological counseling for his experience. Date July 19 Subject D834200 Description D834200 was used as part of testing to determine the trigger conditions for each cell. When placed in front of the cells, SCP-5676 and SCP-5677 both activated simultaneously and attempted to draw D834200 in. After a brief struggle, D834200 was The individual body parts vanished as per the usual once drawn completely into the cell. Date July 19 Subject SCP-56795 Description During testing of SCP-5674, when the cell door was opened, SCP-56795 manifested and immediately attacked and killed Dr. without warning. It took the form of data expunged. Due to the presence of high-value personnel, standard containment procedures were not feasible. After a total of seven casualties, it was able to lure SCP-56795 back towards SCP-5674, at which point it activated, drawing SCP-5695 back into it. Date December 2000 Subject SCP-56798 Description On December 2000 the door to SCP-5677 was observed to open and close via CCTV, but no instance of SCP-5679 appeared on the monitoring system. Two weeks later, he was found dead in his bed, in circumstances identical to those of deaths involving SCP-966. Mobile Task Force IOTA-1 was dispatched and located SCP-56798 within Site-41. SCP-56798 appeared similar to an instance of SCP-966, with variations and data expunged. SCP-56798 was successfully contained, and facility cameras were upgraded to observe additional wavelengths. End of report. On only two occasions have individuals placed inside a cell by the Foundation reappeared. In the first instance, D903912 escaped from SCP-5673, 68 hours after being placed in it. Subject was suffering from severe injuries, including several lacerations, internal bleeding, and burn marks around his wrists and ankles. D903912 died several minutes after reappearing, before TF Delta-9 could reach him. In the second, D-937122 appeared 157 months after being placed in SCP-5676. D-937122 attacked Foundation personnel on site, despite also having suffered serious injuries, including head trauma, several missing fingers, and burn marks around her wrists and ankles. Once restrained, D-937122 was interrogated by a member of Task Force Delta-9. See Audio Log 567-937122 Audio Log 567-937122 Begin Log Agent R-21 Please state your name. Heavy breathing is heard from D-937-122. No response. 
Agent R-21, please state your name. D-937-122 does not respond. Agent R-21, look, I am very sorry, and I want to help you, but we can't give you medical attention unless you cooperate with us. So please, please state your name for the record. D-937-122, my name? You want to know my name? Fuck my name! There is no name! There is no anything! But, but there is. I escaped! I got the medal off! None of the data expunged. I should be free! Let me go! D-937-122 is heard struggling, apparently attempting to escape. Agent R-21. I apologize, but now we have the opportunity to... D-937-122. Interrupting Agent R-21. Fuck your opportunity! There is no opportunity! There is only escape! You called me a monster. Maybe I am one. But the nightmares? The unintelligible mumbling. Compared to their crimes, I've done nothing. Nothing at all. They... Data expunged. I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing. End log. Closing statement. At this point, D-937-122 breaks down into hysterical sobs. Agent 21 attempts to calm her, but she only grows more hysterical. D-937-122 begins gasping for air and appears to go into cardiac arrest. Attempts to revive D-937-122 fail. During the autopsy, D-937-122's body is revealed to be covered in tiny puncture wounds and has an unknown toxin in her bloodstream. Addendum 567-1 Further testing with SCP-5675 has revealed that it is triggered by those who have committed adultery. It is also noted that not all individuals who have committed theft trigger SCP-5671. Consistent patterns have not yet been established. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-566. Word a day, right now. Or for the complete course, Watch this playlist.